All right, folks, Keith here from Dual Sport Journey. And uh, just another part of the uh, Bras 250 Recon assembly and review. Yeah, I figured I'll uh, take it out for his first ride right now and, uh, and just see how it feels. Looks like I got plenty of gas. This thing's got a big three gallon tank. That's big for a dual sport or a dirt bike, uh, that's for sure. But I might take it out on the road a little bit. I don't imagine it's gonna feel all that great out on the road with these big knobby tires, but uh, drive it around and see what it feels like. So right away, you know what? The steering does not feel like a dirt bike and doesn't seem to turn really tight. Yeah, that's full lock right there. Oh, you know what? Boy, this seat's really comfortable too, wow. All right, I get it. This thing, this thing feels just like a sport bike. It it does not feel like a dirt bike. That's what it is. That's that's what I'm feeling. Okay, all right. Yeah, it it does not. Indicators works. Neutral. Second. Third. First. Okay. Okay, does the UE nice? All right, well, <clears throat> now that I have my mirrors on, so I wasn't planning on going out on the road, so I, I didn't even bother put my mirrors on, but uh, I think I want to take it out on the road. So just taking it really easy, you know, it's got about three miles on it now, just from riding around a little bit. Okay, so that's fifth gear, 5,000 RPMs, doing about 50. Those tires, these tires are really noisy. Okay, so I've had the chance to get this bike out. So what I found, I had a hard time wrapping my head around the feeling that I got when I first started riding this bike around a little bit. Of course, it looks like a dirt bike, but when you get on it, it does not feel like a dirt bike. It finally came to me. It feels like a larger adventure bike without the power. Okay, remember it is a two, uh, they say 250, but the engine displacement is actually less than 230, I believe. So, but when you get on the bike, it just, the turning radius 
is not what you'd expect from a dirt bike. The first U-turn that I went to do with this bike, I suddenly found myself on full lock. Uh, in other words, I had the bar handlebars turned so far that they just locked and I couldn't turn anymore. So I was really surprised by that. But then it hit me at that feels more like a sport bike. Um, but when you get on this thing, it, it really does feel like an uh, adventure bike. That's kind of what it feels like, uh, or a sport bike. So from there, uh, the tires obviously, okay, well, I'm sure they're great for riding on soft surfaces. However, for the riding that I do, uh, which is a little bit on pavement, but a lot of it is hard packed gravelly uh, roads, uh, state truck trails, um, th kind of things like that. So on hard surfaces, these tires um, are, are not good. These are not good tires for, for that, for, for my purpose, okay? Um, so I'm probably going to be looking at getting a more closer to 50-50 type tire uh, for this bike, which I'm sure will smooth things out dramatically. So, uh, moving on, uh, back, the tank, three-gallon tank. I love that. Uh, that's one of the main things I love about this bike is the three-gallon uh, gas tank. Most of your dual sport or dirt bikes, you know, you're used to two gallons or less, you know, two gallons tops. And, uh, you know, this comes to you with 50% more fuel capacity. I'll take it. Um, I... I really like that. So the engine, um, it seems to be running fine. It starts fine. You know, I'm almost thinking it might be a little running just a little bit lean. I'm not sure yet. I, I, I need to put some more miles on it, but I might want to uh, rejet the carburetor, but I'm, I'm not going to do it right now. I'm going to, I'm going to continue to ride it a little bit and, uh, see what happens as it, uh, Breaks in, loosens up a little bit. So uh, moving on back. Uh, oh, the brakes. Um, I, when I, of course, when I first got on it, uh, the brakes just felt awful. But what it was, they just needed to be broken. in. So I didn't clean the discs off like I should have. That's just very basic beginner stuff on a brand new bike. Uh, if you get it from the dealer, they usually do that. Um, I didn't do it, and that was bad on me. They're feeling much better now that there's some a few uh, now that there's a few miles uh, on the bike. Continuing back, the exhaust. So this thing is super quiet. It's just super super quiet. If you like a real quiet bike, uh, you'll love this. This is is super quiet. I can go into state land around some of the camping areas and I can ride around and explore and not worry about um, you know disrupting the campers that are there. Uh, moving on back, uh, lots of light in the back. The turn signals are great. When I first saw them I thought oh no way but they are super bright. They're LED. They're more than sufficient. Okay moving on around as I stated before uh, there's a really, I have a really nice rack for this, and I ordered a, uh, a, a pouch um, as well to strap on it to carry some stuff around. I just haven't got the rack on yet, um, but I'll get that on here soon. Uh, the seat, what can I say? It is an extremely comfortable seat. Um, yes, when you want to slide back a little bit, this, this hump right here, I don't know. You know, if you're not doing a lot of technical riding and stuff, it doesn't really matter, you know. So, um, I don't mind it at this point, um, having this having this little hump here. Uh, the seat is really comfortable, and I could definitely, definitely uh, see myself, you know, taking this on a longer trip. So, I love that uh, about the bike. The chain... Uh, it's probably the chain of sprockets are probably going to be one of the first upgrades I do. Um, I just don't have a lot of confidence in that size chain, um, so I, I got to do a little bit, a little bit more research into that. I don't like the kickstand. Just give you an idea here. 
Okay, this is what it looks like when you put the kickstand up. In my opinion, should not stick out that much. That just seems really excessive, but I've already kind of looked this over and I see how I can fix this. So uh, there's a spot right on that nub where the kickstand stops. All I got to do is I'm just going to cut that up a little higher and that will allow the kickstand uh, obviously to come up and in uh, a few inches and I think it'll be fine after I do that. So I'm not worried about the integrity of that because that little nub right there, it's just a stop. That's all it is. So I can, I can, I can cut that up quite a bit and uh, I won't have, to, won't have to worry about that. So that's a pretty easy fix. So the instrument panel, I kind of showed briefly before. Uh, you can see I got about, about 19 miles on it, but this has me wondering now. I took notice of one stretch there where, you know, I was doing about, the speedometer set I was doing about 55 and at about 5,500 RPMs. And I thought, well, that's, that's great, you know, I mean, for a little engine, um, that's great. I'll be able to cruise right along uh, at 60, 62 or so, you know. Um, but then when I looked at my phone app, my phone app said my maximum speed was 50 miles an hour. So that's five miles an hour less than what the speedometer read. I don't, I mean, I know there's usually a little bit of error, but that's like a 10% error. That's kind of excessive in my opinion. Okay, so it's some, that's one thing I have to figure out. Gas gauge, love having a gas gauge. Uh, Dual sport, a lot of dual sport bikes, especially the older ones, none of them have gas gauges. Uh, my DRZ 400 does not have a gas gauge. Having a gas gauge is awesome. Plus the three gallon gas tank, uh, perfect. So that's about it, folks. Um, as I get out and ride it some more, obviously, um, you know, I'll, I'll add to this and uh, I'll keep bringing you some information on this bike. Uh, in the meantime, uh, thanks for joining me and be safe.